And now the latest across the wide world of tropics. Tropic Weather Bulletin for November the 13th. Well, as we look across the worldwide map this evening, we see a quiet map for once in a while. It's a quiet night here, tropical cyclone-wise, that is. We do have a couple areas of interest across the world on day 317 of 2021. Could those push us closer to the yearly average of 92? We'll have to see over the next few days. One place you will not find one of those areas of interest is the Atlantic Basin on day 165 of hurricane season. The glorious No Storms Active tag is once again over the Atlantic Basin. Let's hope this one stays for the rest of the year. Let's hope it stays actually until hurricane season 2022 at least. The models really aren't depicting really anything. I mean, of course, there's always that one ensemble that has that major hurricane uh, that just randomly pops up. Other than that, not much showing up on the ensembles or global models, so let's hope that keeps consistent. If we look towards the eastern Pacific, it's a similar story here on day 181 of hurricane season. No storms are active here, and I wouldn't be surprised if that remains for the rest of the season. Again, the seasons end in the North Atlantic and Eastern Pacific on November 30th. Although, do keep in mind, of course, tropical cyclones don't care about the calendar. They can form at any point in the year. Although they're most likely to form, of course, within hurricane season. In the Western Pacific, we do have a 10% area of interest. We marked this last night, and it really has not seen a lot of confidence increase with the models, which is why we've kept it at 10% tonight. But if, say, the models were to increase confidence tomorrow or a couple days from now, we could see that chance gradually increase over the next few days. So do keep this in mind. In the Northern Indian Ocean, we do have uh, an invest here now. Invest 92B was just designated not too long ago before I started recording this. As it generally attracts northwestwards, it could form into a depression or storm before it uh, strikes India. The IMD is going moderate chance of, of tropical cyclone genesis within four days, high chance within five days. And that would be for a depression, that's not for a tropical storm. If we look towards the Southern Hemisphere seasons, it's a similar story to the Eastern Pacific and North Atlantic here in all the basins, Southwest Indian Ocean, Australian region, South Pacific, we're all quiet here, no storms are active. And models have a very weak signal in the Australian region for something, but it's a very weak signal, not really anything that we would mark an area of interest for, but we will continue to monitor, monitor it to see if we need to mark anything for it. As we get towards the satellite imagery across the Atlantic Basin, it's generally quiet here. We have a large frontal system though, moving to attach to that low pressure system over the Great Lakes. That brought some significant rainfall and even a tornado warning to portions of Massachusetts earlier in the day. Other than that, we're pretty quiet. Maybe a little frontal system moving through the Azores as well. Uh, nothing signifying tropical cyclone formation here. In the Eastern Pacific, it's generally quiet here as well. Nothing signifying tropical cyclone formation. Some rain being uh, shot towards the northwestern United States. We could see some flash flooding there uh, just due to heavy rainfall amounts. Do keep a watch for the next month or two as we will soon be having our Northern Hemisphere animations uh, come out within the next month or two. In the Western Pacific, it's generally quiet here right now. The area of interest that we've marked is generally looking uh, towards the end of the five-day period, maybe day, maybe day four to day five. That's when we're likely to see more activity increase if the models keep consistent. In the North Indian Ocean, we can see in the Bay of Bengal, blob of a blob of thunderstorms, uh, pretty cold cloud tops are moving westwards. That is our invest, and again, we're giving it about a 50-50 shot of becoming a depression or storm. The IMD is giving a high chance within five days of a depression forming. So we'll definitely keep an eye on this. Uh, regardless of formation, I wouldn't be surprised if very heavy rain falls. In the Southwest Indian Ocean, we don't really have much to look at here. We do have some nice thunderstorms firing up over portions of the ocean, Madagascar and Africa here in the Southwest Indian Ocean. In the, in the Australian region, it it's fairly quiet here. It looks like a pretty nice Saturday here in Australia. Um, so enjoy your Saturday. Enjoy your whole weekend as it's looking like a nice spring uh, weekend for Australia. Most of Australia, that is. In the South Pacific, we can see the sun going across the uh, ocean there. 
or the reflection of it coming up towards the satellite. Maybe a little low-pressure system there east of New Zealand, but nothing signifying tropical cyclone formation here. We're looking generally quiet for our weekend here as well in the spring time. As we get towards the uh, sea surface temperature map, the Central Pacific is uh, fairly warm. G generally warm for the tropical cyclone formation, actually, but the conditions are just not favorable for anything to form there. In the Eastern Pacific and North Atlantic, we're still pretty warm, although the sea surface temperatures are cooling off. Uh, as we are in that time period uh, to where the station temperatures cool off up to March, I believe. Um, and then they'll start warming up towards September. If we get towards the Indian Ocean, northern and southern, we can see it's generally warm here, ready for the cyclone season in the southern part, ready for 92B in the Bay of Bengal. The Western Pacific is piping hot, ready for our area of interest. The question remains, will the environmental conditions be favorable for it? In the Australian region and South Pacific, uh, regions we have generally warm sea surface temperatures, especially across uh, portions of um, north of uh, Australia. There, that looks pretty warm, maybe 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. There, uh, I'll, I'm hoping that no tropical cyclones take advantage of that water. In the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies, the Atlantic Basin is still above average generally across the entire basin. The Eastern Pacific is seeing more pockets of below average that strand into the Central Pacific and strand further into the La Nina uh, pattern taking shape across the equatorial region. The Western Pacific is generally above average as well, above average where area of interest are, is. In the North Indian Ocean, it's above average here, generally a large pocket of near to below average in the Arabian Sea. But where 92B is, where it matters right now, above average generally until it gets near the coast of India. If we get towards the Southern Hemisphere basins, all of them are looking generally above average, much above average in some portions, so they're certainly ready for cyclone season, and we are within it, so we need to keep an eye out for those cyclones. Moving to the On This Day segment, we have uh, three systems active here uh, on 1984, and we have a significant cyclone here in the Bay of Bengal. Let's hope that 92B turns out to be nothing like this. Cyclone 3B was a Category 2 cyclone on this day. It was peaking on this day and was also making landfall in India. This system, what it did, was it didn't just come in and leave. It came in and stole. Uh, the stalling cyclones are always some of the worst. And this one was very significant. Storm surge of up to 20 feet hit some areas of, uh, of the coastline of India. Several. Uh, thousands of uh, houses were destroyed, uh, many died to the storm, and uh, unfortunately um, lots of livestock were also lost within the storm, a pretty devastating storm uh, for India. And it just shows that just because we're in November, doesn't, it doesn't mean that we can't have powerful and destructive storms. We also had across the world subtropical storm Klaus in the Atlantic that was heading out to sea would eventually turn extra tropical on this day was coming off a hurricane peak and typhoon bill was active in the western pacific would eventually i believe become a category 4 super typhoon i don't believe it made landfall in the philippines um at all uh, it might have but it would not make landfall at super typhoon status i know that but it got pretty close to the philippines in 1984 but pretty active on this day i'm so glad that we're not seeing that and i'm hoping 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 that 92B is absolutely nothing like that. I don't think it is going to be, but you never know. Let's move to the on this naming list. I said that last time. I don't know what's pushing me to say on this naming list. That's that's a new one. In the Atlantic Basin, the next two names are still Adrian and Braylon. I wouldn't be offended at all if the Atlantic stayed quiet for the rest of the year. I'm just saying, just saying. You, you don't have to go to the auxiliary list, Atlantic Basin, just saying. In the Eastern Pacific, the next two names here are Vivian and Waldo. In the Central Pacific, uh, I'm sorry how many did not form this year. Hope for next year, maybe. Maybe next year we could see Iona. Who wants Iona? Maybe? As we get to the Western Pacific, we do have a little chance of formation here. The next two names here are Ni Nieto and Rai. In the North Indian Ocean, the next two names here are Jawad followed by Asanai. I will note the IMD's chances of formation are for a depression, not a storm. So if it were to form into a depression, of course it would not get a name. 
And the Southern Hemisphere Basins is pretty much the same that we've been saying since we started the Tropic Weather Bulletins back in May. The next two names in the Australian region are Patty and Ruby. The Southwest Indian Ocean, we're looking out for Anna, followed by Batsarai. And in the South Pacific, we're looking out for Cody, followed by Dovey. Thank you so much for watching this Tropic Weather Bulletin, and we'll have another one tomorrow night.